that was my moment. <laughs> I livened things up a little bit in here, I think. <laughs> that was the moment. You didn't see me in that video because I was taking it. Yeah, I was taking that video as I walked into the London Olympics 2012 to the opening ceremonies. Oh, that was my dream come true. A dream that I had since I was 10 years old. Only then I thought it would be my athletic prowess that got me there, that I'd be a part of the Canadian team, probably playing volleyball or soccer or something like that, but my path didn't take me that way. It was very windy, unexpected. I landed in Zimbabwe, and there I went as a Zimbabwean rowing coach in 2012, nearly 30 years after I thought I'd get there. But what has not changed is this heat that's running up my spine, these goosebumps, and this welling of emotion. I can hardly contain it. Science will say that it's dopamine and adrenaline. I call it passion. Simon Sinek, in his uh, best-selling author book, uh, it's all about the why. Well, today I'm going to tell you it's all about the P by unauthored Rachel Davis. <laughs> so, passion. Passion is where it's at. It's that, that feeling that you get inside you. That feeling that when you're talking to your friends, you just kind of light up. They can see it. It's not something that we look for, we find. We keep hearing this, find your passion. And I'm saying, you don't have to look for it. You can't take a course or make a list. It's here. It lives here. And it may live in the most unexpected place. You're sitting here right now and you're thinking, well, it's because do I have to dream of being a doctor and doing some amazing surgery? Or maybe you have an Olympic dream. Or maybe you just like to make TikTok videos. <laughs> Perhaps you want to be the next YouTuber or Instagram influencer. Whatever it is, today I want to talk to you about taking that feeling and putting it into action, not leaving it there. So it's all about the P's. And it starts with a picture. Now, yes, this is a pretty bad picture, also taken on my phone. That is my Olympic athlete, my keen, that's my daughter on her shoulders. Now, I didn't have a vision board. I had a vision wall. It was a wall in my house that was so big that we had to get onto shoulders in order to put stuff up on it. We put everything on that board, from the times I needed to get to qualify, to the uniforms that we needed, the flights we needed to catch, the places we needed to be, the physiotherapists, the athletes we wanted to emulate, the feelings we wanted to feel, the food that we wanted to eat, everything went on that board. I dream in 3D HD out loud. When you do that, you become immersed. Immersed in your passion. And when that happens, people want to be a part of it. This is my dad. <laughs> he's rolling his eyes right now if he's watching this because he'll tell you that he doesn't like cats. This picture, though, reminds me of the person in my life that would get on board with whatever passion I had at the time, and at the time it was taking in a stray cat that he was highly allergic to. <laughs> but dad went alone. And as my life progressed, my dad became my person. Because after I had this picture in my mind that I put up on a wall or I wrote in a book, right? Then I had to tell somebody, and it was always my dad. And it sounded something like this. Hi, Dad. Yes. Dad, I have bees in my head. And he'd go, take a deep breath, <laughs> put on the kettle, make a cup of tea, because he knows it's going to be a while. <laughs> yep. I'm going to talk for another couple of hours about <laughs> grandiose ideas of something I want to do. And my person, my dad, he didn't ever judge. He didn't say, you can't do it. He just listened. And in this case now, moving right along in my stories, I'd done the Olympics. I got there. And I thought, well, now what? Well, I have to do another Olympics, right? Because that's my dream, and I just keep going down that road. But I didn't have any athletes. My athletes had all moved on. And then I had this idea in February 2016. Keep in mind, the Olympics are in September 2016, just nine months away when I had the idea to put together 
a para-Olympic team. Yes, para-Olympics, meaning that I had to find people to be in my crew that had physical disabilities. Now, I didn't know anybody with any physical disability at the time living in Zimbabwe. They were very hidden. I didn't have any equipment. I had no resources. I'd never coached the Paralympics before. There was so much against this that I didn't need a vision wall. I needed a vision room at this stage to make this one happen. It was a crazy, grandiose idea. But partners will come in. When you are infused with this kind of enthusiasm, people want to get involved. So in this case, as I was strolling around going about my daily life, but always looking for athletes, I find myself in the store. And there's a woman on crutches. And uh, I sidle up to her, as you do in the line. And I go, um, so uh, is that a permanent injury or something just happened recently? <laughs> she looks at me. Well, she looks down at me because she was a very large woman. I was very excited. And she says, um, well, I have a leg amputation, and I went, woo! <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, um, maybe that wasn't the right response, the response right then and there. But hey, I'm really excited about that. I don't think she'd heard those words before. And I said, I want you to be a part of my Olympic rowing team. And then I started to tell her this story. Well, she showed up to my practice. Another bad picture, sorry about that, but... She's a woman wearing the shower cap. Interesting story here. She shows up to my practice in her Sunday finest. Oh yes, she had a nice skirt on. She had had her hair done. She shows up. I may have missed a few details about getting into a boat and doing physical activity in all my excitement. So she's wearing my clothes that I took off my body. And then she just requested, please can I have a shower cap? I don't want to mess up my hair. And although that woman didn't become a part of my eventual team, she was crucial. It was a crucial partnership because she started a movement called hashtag shower caps for Zimbabwe. A crazy, crazy thing that went a little bit viral at the time, but because of that, I got funding, I got flights, I got equipment, all of that. She doesn't realize how integral she was and part of that because she jumped on board. She jumped on board and, oh, and by the way, did I mention that she was turning 60 and she didn't like water? <laughs> yeah, not the best candidate, but an integral part of the story. Now, I've been through having, a, having the passion, having your picture, getting in the people and the partnerships that you need. But know this, it's going to take perseverance because there are going to be chaotic moments at the beginning when nobody wants to start because you say, but I don't, I can't, I'm not ready, I don't have the stuff, I'm too young, I don't have the equipment, I don't have the resources, I can't do this thing. I'll tell you this, I revel in the chaotic moments. I revel in the chaotic moments because in those moments, there is no pressure to perform. There is no guidelines. Nobody thinks you can do it anyways, right? So why not start it? And we're in the middle of a global pandemic, another P, a global pandemic. It is the perfect time, oopsie. It is the perfect time to go into the global pandemic when everyone is rethinking, redirecting, and what's the P word? Pivoting, yes, of course, everyone is pivoting right now right? We're doing that. You are very, very unlikely to hear the words, well, I don't know about that idea because we've always done it this way. <laughs> this is your time. This is your time now. Right. But in the root of the word passion comes the word to suffer. And with any great investment, it comes at a cost. It sure does. It will be painful at times. At times you will think, oh my goodness, how could I do this? I can't go on. It's not going to be easy. And it will come at the most unexpected time. 
For me, it was a few weeks before we were to get on that plane. And my athlete came to me and said, Coach, I'm not getting on the plane. <laughs> what? I was crushed. I was devastated. How could this happen to me after all that I had done? After all the things that we put into place? We were there. We were the wild card. People were expecting us. How could you do this in this moment? It's an Olympic dream. I'm furious. I'm angry, which is also part of passion, by the way. Not all feely good stuff. I'm so angry. And she says to me, Coach, the Olympics has always been your dream. My dream is to bring something back to my community. The community that supported me as a person with a disability, living with a child, the community that looked after that child when I was at your practice, the community that found some clothing for me to wear to your practice, and looked after my homestead when I was away. That community deserves to also benefit from this Olympic experience. Can you make that happen? Oh my gosh, this was a moment for me. It was pivotal because in that moment, I suddenly realized it wasn't about the Olympics. My passion had kind of morphed along the way and, and maybe I'd made it too narrow and that's what I want to say to you. Don't make it too narrow and certainly don't say that it's one thing because passion is a fuel that infused into any of your interests will bring it alive. Because in that moment, I realize that my passion is in the people. My passion is in the connectedness that I feel. My passion is in the journey that you take when you see people grow. I infuse that in my teaching, my coaching, my day-to-day -day living. I infuse it, I hope, in you guys, which is why you'll see mid-conversation with me, those of you who've had them, all well up. All well up, I'll get teary. I'm not sad. I'm just passionate. Absolutely passionate. Undefined. And I use it as my fuel. And my last thing, be patient. Be patient with yourselves because it's not about going 100% all the time, relentlessly in pursuit of a dream, exhausted, going, driving. It's not that. There's a rhythm. There's a rhythm to it. It has ebbs and it has flows and you sometimes need to take a breath. Be kind to yourselves. Be patient with it, knowing that the, it will connect. The dots will connect. Somehow the pieces of the puzzle. So you take that passion and you cushion it here with some patience here. The picture will come together to show you the pathway to bring on the people and the partnerships that you need to peer, persevere through anything that will make all things possible. Thank you very much.